Do anyone that does that is the enemy. That's exactly what Media Matters said they would do. Mm -hmm. I'm well, telling you, I'm very suspect of folks at RT that pop up and go, I'm not going to be part of this takeover of Ukraine. You know, I mean, you know, live on air. That absolutely, you know, you know RT's been infiltrated. And, and, and it's the other way. You know, the, uh, Russia infiltrates the U.S. It's just look at everybody's agenda, folks. Look at what they promote and, and, and look at the long-term compendium of what people have done. I'm well, ranting. Go ahead. No, no, no. Listen, and and to the to the point, you're talking about this uh, uh, young lady last night who who resigned on the anchor desk over at RT, right? And says, "I'm not going to be here anymore." Well, what I wanted to know was, can can you give me some specifics? When you say that that you're not going to be part of a network that's whitewashing for Putin, listen, I have all respect if you believe that. So, can you tell me what's happening? Tell me about the whitewashing. Give me some examples of it. Which she didn't didn't do when she stepped down. She just said, "I'm not going to be a part of this whitewashing, and I'm out of here." And she left. Um, if that if that's the you know her conscience, if that's her conviction, that's fine. But I'd like to know some details on it, and, and I'd like to know specifically. I have an interview by her, and I'm not accusing her of being an operative. I'm just saying it needs to be looked into, because uh, you know I know for a fact, and I'm not. Uh, I can talk about this, but it just sounds unbelievable. The White House got in touch with RT two years ago and said, do not have him back on anymore if you want to keep your license in this country. Really? Oh, yeah, that's what I was told. And they never had me back on, which I don't even care about. I mean, I think when I've been on with Max Kaiser, uh, that can still get on and still air. But he has to go through a bunch of trouble to get me on. I don't even care because RT domestically doesn't have a very big audience. Right. Worldwide, it's big. Mm -hmm. Plus, I, people would say in media, I'm not selling anything worldwide, so I don't want to go on RT. Well, I want to go on RT to sell freedom, mm -hmm. to sell the idea of liberty. Uh, but they didn't like me. I would always go in there and talk bad about Stalin and Lenin and stuff. And even though Russia doesn't go that direction of Stalin and Lenin now, still, it's kind of like, hey, don't insult our you, background. You're messing with the archetypes. Yeah, right. exactly. Messing with the archetypes. But, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I've been on Japanese TV, British TV, Iranian TV. The media always is like, what, do you work for the Iranians? No, I like to go talk to the Iranians. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and why shouldn't you? I mean, we have this policy in this country where you, we don't want to talk to anyone. We don't want to share our ideals. We don't want to have dialogue and conversation. And well, it's like CNN. What What is Ron Paul doing going on Alex Jones's show? Or, or all this gatekeeping of MSNBC? Right. What's Tucker Carlson doing on his show? What's it your business with half a million viewers? You're a joke. You're a hoax. You're a fraud. Don't sit here and tell me with three million listeners every day how you hang the moon and you decide everything. I'm sick of the condescension. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's it's a if you want to be a part of what we're doing, you can't be a part of what they're doing. It's it's like it's like the cool kids table at uh, at high school, and and they want to decide where you're going to sit and who you're going to be talking. Yeah, to. I wasn't at the cool kids table. I was behind the the wreck building with the cheerleader. <laughs> and on my lunch break, I mean, I'm just going to be honest here. <laughs> and, and, and in a similar way, that's still what's happening with new media, right? Instead of sitting inside the lunchroom, you're out uh, behind the. The bleachers, but the point is that that's that's the game that's being played, and you're absolutely right. It's about creating this this image of of we are the elite in media, and so nobody can be anywhere near where we are. And as you said, it still goes back to the fact that nobody's watching. I mean, how can you consider yourself elite when you have no viewership? When you get more viewers on the clip on YouTube than you do on your own program. It should, it should be embarrassing. So it's interesting to watch how right now media does not have an answer to that and they don't have an answer to it. I got to tell you, I've talked to a lot of very high level executives about direction, where, what they're doing, where they're heading. And you know what the response is? By the time we crash, we'll be retired. It won't be our problem. Now that's really the thinking. That's the attitude of the establishment is yeah. your show is going to get really big, Jones, but America is going to basically collapse and it won't matter. I mean, that, that is a loser attitude. They don't even care. They want to just keep riding out, making their money. That's why they don't care about the decisions they're making. Yeah, no, they don't. Because ultimately, they're like, it's not going to be my problem. Let it be somebody else's problem. Um, and so, it, because right now, it's like, we're not going to mess with the status quo. We're just not going to mess. With, that's because the guy. executives of the subsidiaries want the status quo. That's right. That's right. And so they're not going to change it. And so if people expect that CNN is going to make some drastic change, that MSNBC will make some drastic change, it's it's not going to happen. No, it's a facade. No. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to- They will shut way. CNN off before they would make a change and put a pro-liberty broadcast on because they're part of the occupying globalist media. Yeah, it's that's not rhetoric. They are occupiers. No, they absolutely are. And the, and the, and the goal on their end again as we've talked about is really about it's about controlling message. I mean, just think about this. When we talk about things like cryptocurrencies, you know, Bitcoin, when we talk about things like um, you know, individual freedom, when we talk about, you know, 
nullification. I mean, how many newscasts around the country even even know those terms? But we're popularizing them, I and even though those are all messy things, they're real change. Exactly. And 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 through the crises, through the struggle, we will develop better forms of it. That's right. And and to what you said, look, that that's. They're all forms of change. We're watching the change happen. And people are excited about those issues. They're talking about those issues every single day. But they're having those conversations uh, either on social media sites. They're having them around their kitchen tables. They're having them around the world. That's pool. right. CNN, and they all wonder why they're dying and why, why Fox isn't growing. It's because you don't ever get out the same tried little rut you're in. You just do the same thing over and over it's again. It's predictable. It's entirely predictable. I mean, think about the fact that 30, 40 years ago, you could turn on a newscast and you only had ABC, NBC, and CBS, right? And it was the same basic stories every single night. Well, here we are 40 years later, it's still the same basic stories every single night. That's what's incredible about it. What's so remarkable is that they are the exact same stories every day. It's completely predictable. In the same order. In the same order. With the same advertisers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's no question. Look, you talk a lot about vaccines. You talk about uh, those issues. We did a piece during our Truth and Media season last year talking about just vaccine court. Now, that's not very... Let's talk about that when we come back and do five minutes of overdrive. And if you're not too tired or if you don't have to go, you may have to. You're welcome to do the nightly news with us uh, tonight or tape something uh, so you can kind of, you know, break down whatever subjects you want. Ben Swan of BenSwan.com is here. Great banner back and forth. Very special broadcast tomorrow, by the way. Stay with us. The but... Truly, we're living in an authoritarian system. Ben, I've thrown out so many points here. What else is on your radar screen? I could ask questions all day, but what else What else do you want to impart to the audience? Well, one of the things that we're working on right now is uh, this. First of all, we're launching our season two of Truth and Media Project. Uh, we released an episode today, and I'd encourage people to check it out. But basically, it's, it's taking on this political primary system in America. Because we have this system right now that's essentially set up where about half the voters in the country are in a position right now where they cannot, they cannot, we got pop-ups, sorry about that. <laughs> Basically, right, what they do right now is they cannot vote in a primary unless they are registered as a Republican or a Democrat. But about half the country is no longer affiliated with either party, and yet voters have to pay $400 million a year to pay for those primaries. And the dinosaur media is continuing to only try to prop up the two parties and give them attention while trying to stop the Tea Party from actually taking over the Republicans so we have a second party. That's right. We don't even really have two. No, we have we have one party that has two wings on it, right? It has a right wing and a left wing, but it's the same party. And you're absolutely right. But I mean, think about those numbers. 50% of the country is no longer affiliated. If you watch any national newscast, you would never believe that. If you watch that, you would believe the country is equally divided between Democrats and Republicans, and there's this cosmic arm wrestling match between the two to see who's going to get just enough leverage to win the next election. Does the illusion continue to fall slowly, or could it collapse? I think it'll collapse. I do. I think it's a, I think it's a generational fall, too. I think by the next two elections that we have, I think 2016 presidential, 2016, and then when we go to, to 2020, I think you're going to see significant shifts in terms of the way the electorate is voting. And they know that, and the Pentagon, in their own prospectuses, say that. That's why they're setting up Homeland security checkpoints tanks they're going look you're not getting out of this voting boys <laughs> and that's the problem is they're planning an authoritarian takeover well i mean listen what's your take on all that the the, the billions of bullets the checkpoints oh absolutely listen we we did a piece recently i know you guys over at, at infowars broke that story originally about all that stockpiling of, of ammo uh which by the way was incredible work that you guys oh no but it was, was important no it was very important and it was way ahead of the curve what was interesting to me as a media guy is that it took about a year and a half for everybody else to even even cover oh at first they said it didn't exist right yeah it was it was a fake story it was a made up story. they had ap come out and say it wasn't real yeah and then they come back and say oh well maybe it is real well then it turns out oh uh, in fact it is well then then comes the big question which they never bother to ask why is the post office stockpiling bullets why is social security administration stockpiling ammo why are, why are we, especially right now, at a time where we have the $17 trillion debt, as taxpayers, let's just make it a fiscal issue. Let's forget about everything else. Let's make it just a fiscal issue. Why are we paying for postal workers to be carrying around that much ammo or to be trained that way? Well, I mean, it's now two and a half billion rounds of ammo, enough to fight a 30-plus year Iraq war. When it was 1.6, it was like a 27-year war in Iraq. And then they're training for riot control. They're training in all the manuals to fight the Tea Party, the only opposition uh, libertarians, I mean, they see that half the country calls themselves libertarians. Well, they see we're taking over. They're preparing military operations for us. Well, if, but if they can never have that debate, if they can just deny it, then we can't debate it and get the moral high ground and point out how they're treacherous. So instead, they just want to deny it.
Mm -hmm. See, that's why we have to continue to force the admission that it's real so we can then discredit it. Right. Well, absolutely. And, and, and when you have this, this militarization of police going on around the country, it's, it's just incredible to watch that happen. Um, the buildup, I mean, folks have to wake up and pay attention. We're going to come back, and I want to ask you about the Second Amendment, where you see that fight going, a little five-minute piece. And then that's it until tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, with the main transmission. And some stations don't carry this uh, extra time that's coming up. You can always find us online at InfoWars.com forward slash show for the free audio video feeds and the podcast. Stay with us. Overdrive coming up. Nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock. To Spread the word. Support our local AM and FM affiliates. That's key. Today. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important.